I'll just clean that surface. I can see it's quite pitted on the chrome there. That's probably why this was so reluctant to move. So a little bit of grease under there I think will be the answer. And if this suddenly stops in the middle of a sentence it's because the camera is telling me that the battery is just about flat. Okay, we've got two screws that look much the same, but aren't the same. Oh, one's left hand thread, isn't it? Of course. Oh, you can turn that now. It's stiff, but at least you can turn it. These cameras were probably made in very small numbers. Um, certainly a lot of the parts look hand finished. Here, this has been filed. You can see file marks running across there. The slot in this slotted hole looks to me like it was created by drilling a hole at each end and then running, or probably a series of holes, and then filing between them. There's a little step here which suggests filing. Very interesting. I'll clean this component and put it back in because I want to see what action, how it interacts with this piece on the top of the camera. run a little bit of molybdenum paste on there. It obviously sits there. This is right at the back of the camera. And that little detent there, a little lump knocked up in it, presumably to detent. It detents into these two positions. Very interesting. A little bit um, there's nothing wrong with the idea of the engineering it's more the quality of the manufacture that strikes me that it's that would be one detent position and that's the other detent position that's interesting and that's quite stiff that stops this, this lever from swinging across so that the film advance stays free. What else does it do? Right, if we move this back into the 6x6 position it allows this arm to move again. Just reset that. Why is that not dropping in? That thing's not moving freely. Why is that not moving freely now? That's correct. Now it sticks. It hasn't returned. It's rubbing on something. It's got to be to do with this thing. And is it because I bent that thing back flat? I bet it is. It is. It's because I bent this lever flat. It meant that it was rubbing on that lever there. 
and that was stopping it from moving freely. Well, what a business, eh? <laughs> it's um, very slightly Mickey Mouse, I think, in engineering. Well, you didn't see any of that, did you? That's a shame. This lever here was sticking on the top on the sur top surface of that lever, and I bent it up slightly. Now, of course, that's the lever I'd flattened out nicely because I thought it should be flat. Now it works correctly again. And in the free position, you can should be able to wind and fire as many times as you like. I can see there's a lot of conflicting areas here that, uh, yeah. That is not very well done. It certainly needs another guide position here. I suppose that this is guided by the top cover. And that would prevent it from moving out of line. Yeah, the 6x6 six six position that works flawlessly, the shutter release, but in the other position, the free running position, the 35mm position, which is all the way, that's where the detent drops in at that point, it doesn't seem to work as freely. It's working well enough now. What's the secret? When this piece here is pushed all the way forward to its detent position, the arm on it holds this lever right back beyond the point where it could be, it interacts with this piece. Right on the point of the shutter release working. Well, that's a funny thing. I better clean up this rangefinder. Well, this is the arm that follows the cam. And it's a little bit stiff. You'll see that it doesn't return especially smoothly. Now, there's a, a nut on the bottom of that that I'll need to undo. That is a little bit wide for that screwdriver. Let's try this one. There we go. If I remove that nut, I can probably unscrew this screw. I can. There's a very mutilated looking washer underneath there that went under the arm. Here's the arm itself. It looks a little bit, uh, bit rough. And there's the piece of metal that it sort of pivots on. That looks a bit rough too. I think I'll have to clean up these components. Make sure they're dead smooth. 
and then lubricate things. That's like surface corrosion on there. This is quite crudely made. That edge is quite sharp. It's got file marks across here. So this was certainly hand finished. Now where that screw passes through the arm and bears onto this casting, there's got quite a recess in there, quite a countersink. That wash has probably been put under there in a, an effort to stop the screw from binding down too deeply into that countersink and effectively locking the arm. I don't know whether that was countersunk on purpose originally to give you some uh, adjustment so you can take the slack, the, the play out of the arm. That's quite possible. I think they probably overdid it. And certainly a washer like this really defeats the purpose of some of that. I'll clean these components up, put them back together, and uh, see if I can make this thing run smooth. If it's stiff in its action, the effect you most likely notice is that it doesn't return to the rest position correctly. The mechanism will push it out, but it won't return automatically under its own steam. It's certainly the other one that I dealt with, this screw, this bush here, that was looked quite tight on that screw the arm was tight on there and this one's no different it doesn't move freely on there if this screw this is only brass if that's been done up hard what will happen is effectively it'll tend to mushroom out a bit at that edge and I suspect that's what's happened In upside down it might even be smooth in its operation. Let's see. Yeah, it's just stiff. It's just no good at all. So I've just got to run around that edge carefully with a, a light file. And I'll run around the inside of this with a bit of wet and dry until this revolves smoothly. There's no need for it to be as tight as that. The spring effectively defeats any backlash in the system, so it's not as though it's going to affect the accuracy of it, as long as that's a nice free-running bearing there. That arm moves nice and smoothly now. I'm quite pleased with the, uh, the way that moves. So the rest of the rangefinder, I just need to give it my attention. This glass at the end here, that's the semi-silvered mirror. This surface here, that's a plain glass. The inside surface will be the silvered side. Now the plain glass side, I can clean. The semi-silvered semi surface on the inside, I'm going to leave alone. The outside will have most of the dirt on it anyway. And if I touch the inside surface, I will just succeed in cleaning away the silver, which I do not want to do. Now here we have a prism by the looks of it. I'm checking this closely to see if this is a prism, or whether it's a front surface mirror glued to a block. If it's a front surface mirror, I do not want to touch it. It looks, like, it looks like a prism with silver loss on the back surface, but I cannot be sure. That I think I will leave well alone. It's a big surface. A little bit dusty, but the dust is blown away there quite well. I'm going to leave that alone. Discretion is the better part of valour when it comes to 
silvered surfaces. You clean the wrong thing and it'll be end up as a nice clean piece of glass that you can see straight through. There'll be no silver left at all. That rangefinder can probably go back on the camera now. But while I've got it at this stage, I'm going to put the, knob, the focus knob on the top here and just use the knob to revolve this. I want to check. I can see that the cam surfaces here are very dry for a start, so I want to clean those and lubricate them. I'm just checking the action. It actually moves the front end quite well. That's very smooth in its action, but that cam surface is certainly dirty and could benefit from cleaning and lubrication, so that's what it'll get. Oh yeah, it's quite worn looking too at the top there, which is, that stands to reason because that's the infinity end of the scale, that's where it's been doing most of its work. Right, well I think a little bit of uh, synthetic grease on that cam surface would be a good thing to do. I'll put some on here. That's certainly much smoother in its action. That feels really good. Alright, that's good. The rangefinder arm runs on this cam surface here. So that I'll need to do uh, lubricate. And I'll do the same thing. I'll fit the rangefinder back in position. Of course I need this arm off here now. Now we've got a better idea of what it does and how it fits. The rangefinder sits in here. Where's the screw holes? right to the front. Okay. It was me trying to get it to fit at the back of the camera. It wants to fit at the front. One in. It's the other one in. I can see the arm moving as I turn the range put the focus knob. I lock those two screws down. That's good. I can put this lever back in place with its mask of course. Can I get this all wriggled in at one time? I may have to put this on the rangefinder and then put the rangefinder down. That's a little bit cursed.
in place, that's in place. Get this lever in place. No, it's just flaming. Managed to unhook itself from where I'd carefully put it. Let's get that back out. What's the secret? It almost looks as though this was bent down into place after placement. See this is riveted onto that arm and then the rivets have been filed off short. What a terrible thing to assemble. No wonder the screw heads were a little bit damaged looking. That lever's under there, I can put that detent back on. Well I would say that this was a camera that was lax design refinements. It would never have been fun to put together on the line. Across in that position it forms the mask for the viewfinder. Very good. Got a much better understanding of this now. Which is just as well. Because once I've done it, I will probably never ever work on another one in my life. That's going right. I'm going to clean this front lens from the rangefinder. And then see if I can get the rangefinder adjusted correctly because that'll be the next task. Why does that not lock in now? Ah, oh, hang on. So I haven't got it returned to the infinity position? No. Oh, because I've got the foot up. What an idiot. Oh, I don't know. Some people, you can't take them anywhere. Okay. 
you clean that lens up and see about focusing is getting this rangefinder adjusted. Well the horizontal alignment's actually pretty good. The vertical alignment is out slightly. Now I expect that that's adjusted at the position of this lens at the front here. So I'm going to try rotating that slightly and see what difference it makes. I'll try swinging it one way, I'll try swinging it another way and I'll look out the window and see what sort of result I get and report back. Well that was one of the easiest rangefinders I've had to adjust in a long time. Here the lens at the front, rotating that centerpiece left or right you could uh, effectively change the vertical alignment. Once I had the vertical alignment correct the horizontal alignment was adjusted with a single screw down in here. little adjustment screw there. It wasn't out by much and it had adjusted very easy and it's a very good range finder. It tracks nicely and um, is nice and clear. It's got a very good image. So I'm pleased I didn't fight with that and do anything silly like um, try and clean semi-silvered mirrors that could have only brought me grief. The image is good, it doesn't require any extra cleaning on that regard. So I'm happy with the state of that and really at this point I can put the top of the camera back on. I've got to clean those viewfinder windows at the back, back there, clean the housing itself, but otherwise it's all looking very good. I may have to do some um, last rangefinder adjustments once I put this back on the camera because I have to remove this lens complete with its holder in order to get the top cover on. But at least I know how to go about adjusting it and I don't expect it to be a fight. Well as you can see I have our press fan all back together again, rangefinder all adjusted, film advance all sorted out, shutter release working nice and smoothly. I think the owner will probably be pleased to see this come home. And I see that there really is a frame counter here on the dial for the 35mm film. But how exactly you go about using that, I just can't tell. It's as clear as mud. Surely there's some method of madness, method to it. It's certainly got numbers there, but what you align them to is anyone's guess. But there certainly is some method for working out which frame you're on with your 35mm. And it does convert back to the 6x6 without too much trouble, so it all looks good to me. Thanks for watching. Well I thought I'd better investigate this um, advance rewind lever on the base of the camera and it's coupled to this very um, odd looking eccentric here which shifts this lever in or out of engagement. Now assuming film was being wound through the camera it must now I'm assuming that this couples to a spool inside the back of the camera for 35mm that moves this lever. Now this lever, we cock that shutter and it's in that position the extension of the shutter release pushes this lever across releasing it from that pin. So this does meter the amount of film that you can wind on the 35mm advance when you're using 35mm film. But how exactly that all works is still a puzzle because obviously it's missing pieces. There must be a spool that drops in there somewhere that couples to that sprocket wheel. Something that drops in it. Yeah, I can see. I'll hold this together because all these pieces want to fall out. I can see here there's a shaft coming up. Now the 35mm sprocket must couple to that shaft. 
and that's what would give you your metering for your film going through the camera. This is moving properly now, it wouldn't move before, but this holds a gear on that shaft. It rotates and couples to it. It's all very interesting and all mysterious. And with pieces missing, it's difficult to know what I'm looking at. But I'll just apply a little bit of synthetic grease to these working surfaces and just put this lot back together again. It is unusual to say the least. Mickey Mouse, if you're really looking for a good adjective for it. It's... Um, just strange. That obviously goes on that side of that lever, and I don't know what that lever does. And I don't even know that everything is even in here, to tell the truth. Try assembling it in the advanced position, see if that goes together. Yes, it seems to. Knobs pop up and pop down, that's all good. I couldn't get one of those knobs to move earlier, and it's because it had been unscrewed and um, hadn't fallen back into place the gear was not correctly positioned. So it's probably just as well I did decide to investigate. Otherwise it would have been awkward getting a film spool loaded at this end of the camera with that um, knob being effectively blocked from moving. Right, so yes, that means I can put my film spool in there if I wanted to. My supply spool. No, my take-up spool goes at this end. If I can get that lined up. That's it. That's good. So there's our press fan. A little bit more investigation. And um, now I'm done with it. Well, the press fan. What, a, what happened with that? In the end, I was able to uh, form up a new flash contact. Um, there's no way I could really shape that flash contact to make the flash work correctly for an electronic flash, there's just no practical way to make a contact in the space that's given that would make contact when the blades are fully opened. So the flash is made, contacts make, as the blades are opening, which would mean that for a bulb flash, particularly with a fairly slow shutter speed set, that would be more than adequate. For an electronic flash, I have in mind that it would always be doomed to fail, unless you were using a very small aperture perhaps. Anyway, with that said, the camera is now finished. It can go back to its owner. Rangefinder is good, focus is good, um, shutter is working correctly, film advance interlock works correctly, and of course I have uh, investigated the levers and buttons on the bottom of the camera and have more of an understanding about how that 35mm stuff worked. 
So, thanks for watching.